things that I've learned in speaking is that you should never start a talk with an apology, but I actually need to issue an apology early, so I'm gonna start by telling you a joke and then come back to the apology. So why did the junior software developer quit his job? Because after two years of work, he still didn't get a raise. <laughs> tough, tough room. All right, let's play this. So um, these slides hopefully are gonna autoplay for you guys. So I went on a two-year road trip in an RV, and I worked remotely the entire time, and I took a ton of pictures, and so the apology is that if you're friends with me, Micah and family, or you follow me on Twitter and you've never seen any of these pictures, it's because I suck at social sharing. So these are like some of the best pictures and highlights from our two-year trip. We went all around uh, the country. We went up the East Coast. I actually started in Asheville. Uh, that was kind of where where we kicked off our trip. I came here a couple years ago, did a talk, and then we left for two years. Um, went out west, spent a ton of time out in Utah, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Montana, Oregon, Washington, I mean, everywhere out west. So it was really awesome. Took a lot of pictures. I tried to arrange these chronologically based on my beard length, but I didn't do a very good job of that. Um, so as we get a little bit later in these slides, it's gonna get a little bit scarier as, uh, as my lack of shaving. If you wanna see a cool story, ask me later about the elk antler story. Um, so road trip aside, the point of this talk is what did I actually learn as I was going out on the road, living in an RV, I generally had very limited Wi-Fi connectivity, but I was still working mostly full time, doing development, a lot of WordPress, um, and kind of what, what did I pick up from that experience? Um, so I'm going to try and share some of that with you here briefly. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is camping hacks in general. So these have nothing to do with WordPress directly, but these are good things to know if you wanna go camping and living in the middle of nowhere, uh, but you still wanna be able to make software. So first of all, there's two apps. One is called Camp and Diem, the other one is called Sensorly. Camp and Diem is awesome because it tells you about free campsites all across the country where you can go live for free for up to 14 days and nobody will bother you. Um, it also will tell you how many bars of 4G based on the network provider is available at that campsite. I learned that all you need to successfully push code to get remotely is two bars of Verizon 4G. <laughs> okay? That is not enough to do a video conference on Zoom <laughs> or even make a phone call. Okay? So if your workload involves being on phone calls and stand-ups, schedule accordingly so that you can get to somewhere that has good internet. Um, another quick tip is that campgrounds all advertise that they have Wi-Fi. That is a lie. There is no such thing as Wi-Fi at a campground. They all suck, 100%. Do not even think you're gonna go check into a campground and use their Wi-Fi to do anything productive at all, ever. Did I make that point clear? They don't work. Okay, so that's just a little bit about like camping hacks in general. So let's talk a little bit about some of the WordPress specific stuff since this is a WordCamp, right? Um, so a couple of things on doing remote development work with WordPress that uh, you need to know about if you have very little internet, and in some cases very little electricity. So I have a 12-volt battery system in my camper that I can run for about two days. If you're going to calculate how long you can last on battery, you need to know your electrical consumption in amps, and you multiply that by the number of hours that you plan on running on your battery. So I have a 200 amp hour system, which means I can run one amp for 200 hours. If I'm running 200 amps, I can only run for one hour, okay? So I was actually looking at how much power is my computer using while I'm on the road. And I figured out that most modern HDMI TVs use AC power, which means I have to convert the DC power to AC, which is a very inefficient conversion, and then that TV is gonna suck power even when it's not on. Computer monitors, on the other hand, offer the ability to have a DC input. So you find a computer monitor with a 12 volt input, you cut the end of the cord off where the big heavy block is and you throw that away, and then you strip the wires off, put it on your 12 volt battery, and now you don't have to convert the power to AC just to convert it back to DC to run the TV. Does that make sense? 
Um, I, also, I also took my Mac charger cord, the little brick that sticks in the wall, and I cut that off too and stripped the wires and put that straight on my 12 volt system. I found out the hard way that Macs actually require a very clean source of power. They require that power to be very well, like if you look at the actual electrical wavelengths of the power that your Mac requires, um, it needs to be very clean. Unfortunately, deep cycle marine batteries do not produce very clean power. So I have a very expensive paperweight in my camper that just so happens to look like a Mac Air. Um, so know your power consumption, ba plan on that, figure out how long is it gonna take you to run your batteries. Um, I actually use a Raspberry Pi with my little computer monitor and I can do everything I need on right around one amp. So that means that on just those battery charges alone, on a single charge, I can run for 200 hours and I'm good to go. That doesn't include charging my cell phone. Um, other than that, so I, Norcross is here, but I don't think he's in the room. So there's a really cool plugin called Airplane Mode. It was developed by a guy named Norcross who is here at this WordCamp. If you haven't talked to him, go, go talk to him. He's a cool dude. Um, what it basically does is it disables all of the remote calls that WordPress makes and it, and it reroutes those to local resources. So for example, when you lo load up your dashboard and WordPress checks to find out if a new version of WordPress is available, that's a remote call back to the WordPress API. And so when that call is being made and you don't have internet, that call is gonna take 30 seconds before it times out and fails, which means that your page load, just to load the dashboard, add 30 seconds to it, right? Not very productive. In fact, when you don't have internet, loading the WordPress dashboard at all is not very productive, right? Anything that I have to do that I have to actually go into the back end and do is gonna take a lot longer with no internet. So learn WPCLI. Has everybody in here at least used WPCLI? Okay, hey, who in here is a master at WPCLI? Okay, this is your call to action. Go master WPCLI. I don't mean just like figure out how to do a couple little things here and there. Like go become a freaking master at it and your productivity will go a thousand percent higher than what it is today. Yeah? What is WPCLI? WPCLI is a command line interface for WordPress and it allows for you to do all sorts of goodness like um, creating users, changing passwords, creating content, updating settings, installing, activating, and deactivating plugins or themes, updating core, um, deleting caches, creating post types. There's so many things that you can do with it. And in order to get good at it, you really also need to be pretty proficient with Bash. Not maybe an expert, but you need to at least look at it. Um, so one of the things that I found to be very helpful in my connectivity. So again, everything that I was doing, I had, it was very slow. Just, it took ages to make a simple connection. So I learned how to do things via the CLI because an SSH connection requires the tiniest little bit of connectivity versus an actual browser loading of the WordPress site. So if someone would call me and say something like, hey, my password isn't, I need to reset my password, rather than having to log into WordPress and wait for that page to load, I could just run those commands over SSH, which is much more efficient. Um, there's a really cool thing you can do with SSH, um, which is basically you edit your bash RC file in your user profile on your remote server, and you can set it up to run a, a list of commands every time you log in. So for example, one of, the, one of the things that I had to do really frequently was I had to deploy our application from development to stage or stage to production. And every time I did it, I had to log in and I had to copy all of those commands in and wait for them to finish. And sometimes a deployment could take me an hour because those commands were taking a long time to complete, mainly because of my internet connection. So what I did was I created two users. I created a user called deploy stage and a user called deploy prod. I put all the deployment scripts into my bash RC file and then all I had to do was on my computer, one command, log into that server and as soon as it logged in, I knew that all those scripts were gonna run and then I could just leave my computer alone and I could go and play a little bit more and I didn't have to do anything because that was just gonna run. And it's all being done on the, on the remote machine. So my connection has nothing to do with the speed with which that application actually completes. So that was nifty. Um, and then the other thing is reducing any sort of external dependencies. 
So how many of you have ever seen a plugin or theme that dequeues the WordPress provided jQuery and supplements it with some sort of jQuery that's on a CDN? I freaking hate you. Don't do that. Okay, so like I actually have a plugin that just looks at all the enqueued assets and then tells me if there's any that are remote. And then if they do, it just dequeues that asset so I don't have to wait for any remote error, remote calls to time out or 404 or whatever they're gonna do. All right, so that's a little bit about WordPress stuff. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was redundancy. So these things have to do mostly with developing, but I realized as I was putting these up that there's actually a lot of benefit to having these, even if you're not gonna go travel and live in a camper. Um, the first one is electricity. You need to have more than one sources of electricity. Now, if you work in an office, you can pretty much assume that your power is gonna stay on. But what if your power goes off? How are you gonna get your work done? Do you, does your office have a battery backup of some type that you can work off of at least for a little while to get things done if your power goes out? If not, you probably should. Um, when I was working, I got hit by an electrical storm uh, lightning struck within a mile of our camper and I lost all of our power. So I, had a, I was working with an enterprise client. I won't name them, but they're one of the really, really big WordPress multi-sites that runs. Um, and they, um, I was on the call with them as a sales call and I had just lost all the power in my camper. So I was literally sitting there on the phone with them in the gas station parking lot, plugged into an extension cord that was Un unauthorized plugged into the gas station's power taking notes on paper right I was like man if the people had have seen me uh, taking notes on paper they probably would not have given us that contract so um, have have backups for electricity have backup devices I mentioned that I fried my laptop that was actually the second laptop that I fried on the trip um, so it really stinks when you have no computer so have backup devices right what happens if, if your office gets broken into and they steal your computers? What are you gonna do on the next day? Like, do you have a backup plan for covering your devices? Um, similarly for internet providers, right? What happens if your cable connection goes out? Do you have a 4G backup that you can rely on? These are things that even though you may not be traveling and going off grid, it's still really important to have just in terms of being able to conduct this business reliably. Um, there was a, ha do you, who, does anybody remember when all the DNS in the world went out and Twitter was off for like two days? Okay. Having some way to communicate, if you rely on something like Twitter to communicate and it goes down, what are you going to do? Um, so just things like that with social media. Um, I, there was a really cool hack where I took the GitHub uh, IP address and put it into my uh, Etsy host file so that I didn't need to do DNS lookups anytime I talked to GitHub. So if my DNS went down, I could still communicate with GitHub even though I didn't have DNS. So that was really helpful. Um, and then lastly, is version control everything? Like if it's important to you, put it on GitHub. It can be private now, but literally I put everything on GitHub that I can. I have so many private repositories, it's ridiculous. Because like even simple things like that deployment process that I mentioned, well, if that script gets lost and I've got to rewrite a deployment script, that could be hours of lost productivity. So keep everything version controlled. I version control almost everything in my life now, if it's text-based, basically. Um, and so that's kind of it on the redundancy pieces. Um, a couple of just inspirational thoughts. So let me think, it's 15, yeah. So, I mentioned this road trip, obviously as you can see from these pictures, I went to more than a couple cool places. Um, there's a lot of amazing stuff in this country and I feel like I still haven't seen it all. In fact, I feel like the more I see, the more I realize how much is out there that I haven't seen and that I want to go see. Um, these places are not gonna be here forever. So if you have a desire to go see something, go see it right now. Like, don't even come back to WordCamp. No, I'm just kidding. Um, like, <laughs> Julian's like, I'm gonna kill you. So um, yeah, like, if you, have a, if you have a desire to travel, go do it. We live in a time when this is possible. We, we have the technology to make this possible. And I, I think, and myself included, like, I, it's so easy to just get in the habit of not doing anything that's cool and amazing because you have so much work to do. Like take your work with you, take it on the road, 
go travel for a week. Say, hey, I'm going to take a week and I'm going to go work remotely. And if your employer doesn't like that, then find another one, right? <laughs> or quit your job and be a freelancer and go travel and do what you want to do. Um, the other one is maybe go for like a month or even a year. There's a whole bunch of different programs out there where developers from all around the country will actually get paid to go work remotely for a month. They rent a huge, awesome house, usually in some really amazing place like Thailand, and then all the developers just move into that house for a month, and they all do their jobs remotely, and then they get to hang out in Thailand for a whole month. So like, find cool stuff like that and do it, because it's worth it. It's worth just getting out of your comfort zone, seeing some of this awesome stuff that's out there. Um, and, and I think the main thing I wanted to walk away with is, so we lived in Atlanta for my entire life. So the first 32 years of my life, I was in Atlanta. When you live in one place for a long time, you tend to collect a lot of stuff. You know, you have all these tie downs. I had a job. I had, my kids were in a school. We had a, a network of friends that we enjoyed hanging out with. And in a short period of time, we literally sold all of our stuff. We withdrew our kids from their school. I quit my job. We moved out of our house. And we literally started with nothing. Everything that we owned fit in the back of a pickup truck. So don't be afraid to start over, right? You can always take an iteration and say, what is version two of my life going to look like? And, and be willing and be ready to, to really start over and, 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 and reinvent yourself. Um, so that's it for me. I'm out of time. Maybe we have time for one or two quick questions, uh, or we can just sit here and look at my cute kids. Question? Uh, what did you do for health insurance for two years? What did I do for health insurance for two years? <laughs> Scary, I know. Um, actually, we did have health insurance for a good portion of that trip. Thankfully, I had an employer that I could work completely remotely for. Um, and so they, I had health insurance there. But there was a good like six months out of that two years where we were definitely fingers crossed. Um, and when we got back onto health insurance, like everybody went and got everything fixed. It was like, yeah, I broke a tooth while I was traveling. <laughs> and I went and, I went and I finally went to the dentist and got it dealt with. So, you know, there was that. Other quick questions? Yeah. Did you use a screen for anything? Did I use a screen for anything? No, the command screen. You ever use that? The command screen? No, I don't There's think a so. Called screen. Right? It Mm -hmm. to it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it still has what you had on that terminal, but it's like a virtual terminal. Yeah, so I forgot to mention this. So one of the things that I did was I, I used a lot of like cloud-based computing. So I actually yeah. took, had a VM that was running um, on, on a cloud-based a cloud -based system, and then I could just log into that VM. That's like the and then, version of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually, that was really neat. So one of the projects that I did, I had to migrate a website that was over 10 years old, and it had over, I think it was a, a million posts and almost 3 million images. And I had to migrate it from point A to point B. And so if I was going to try to pull that down to my yeah, no local, forget it, right? So instead, I pulled, I created a cloud-based instance just for transferring those files, I j and I moved it across the internet without ever having to come back to my to my home, and that really helped speed things up. That's real smart. That's cool. Yeah. By the way, um, a Git repo that's over 100 megs takes like never finishes when you have <laughs> bad internet. So like, keep your repos small too. Thank you.